So one of the first things that I wish I knew before I started getting thrown into TIG welding was properly wrapping corners. A lot of people practice running straight TIG welds just like this, point A to point B. But I recommend if you can, cut one of your welding coupons a little bit short and practice a weld like this. You then get a chance to practice wrapping away from a start, doing the straight shot, and finishing with a nice little corner wrap like this. And then if you want, you can TIG weld the other side. This is a small detail that if somebody had this, it would have impressed a lot of people. I was the welding supervisor at my shop. If somebody knew, already knew how to do some of this stuff I'm talking about, I would have been totally impressed. Get this tip down. So worrying about burning through at the start of a pass is definitely a valid concern. I always prefer to use 1 8 of an inch or 3.2 millimeter filler material. I like that this can give me a little bit of extra filler material with each dab. And if I'm moving along, even if I'm doing little tiny taps with it, having a little bit more filler material with this diameter always allows me to keep my overall heat input in check. Anytime you are experiencing any overheating, especially with the start of a pass, I recommend on addressing how much filler material you are using. Especially as you're moving along and things are starting to fade and overheat quickly. A little extra filler material with each step is going to help to take care of this problem. Be brave with your starts. It's all good. Give it a couple dabs of filler material. Again, not too much, but giving it a little bit of filler material as well as paying attention to the overall things like your shape and profile, making sure things do not get too big. I think you're going to see that your heat input is going to stay in control pretty good. When people are struggling with tacks that are being a little bit naughty, add movement to your tacks. Now, what do I mean by this? Take a look at the first one again here. This has been heated up in one single area, that's it. I recommend doing something like this, where we essentially see a bit of movement from the first part of the tack to where we finish the tack. So essentially what we're doing is two tacks instead of one. Sometimes it's not that much, but even the tiniest bit of movement combined with a bit of filler material, this stands a much better chance to hold and be able to resist some strain. Remember, our joint can be under pressure before welding and especially during welding. Adding some filler material, a little bit of movement, this is absolutely gonna give yourself a better shot at getting these things to hold strong. Another really important thing here, when I say adding filler material, some people might assume adding more filler material makes it stronger. Not go overboard with this one. Remember, we are gonna weld over this later. I recommend making each tack roughly the exact same size and profile as the weld that is gonna go over it later. When I was doing welding production for a really long time, I used this old transformer type machine. This thing's probably older than I am. This machine obviously is gonna have a balance setting that's gonna work completely differently to one of these new inverter type machines I have here. And even my inverter type machines I have here, one will work slightly different than the other. Experiment for yourself and experiment for the gear that you are using. When you're working with something like this at low amperage, I encourage you to try running a little bit more of the positive side of the cycle. I think you'll definitely see the welding area will become a little bit cleaner, but you wanna watch for the point where your tungsten begins to flutter or misshape. This is gonna be the threshold where you find you are now running too much of the positive side of your cycle. The same goes for flipping it the other way on the negative side. When you start to see your work looking a little bit foggy or a little bit grainy or not as shiny, this is when we are now running not enough of the positive side of the cycle. This is a great way that you can find out what works best for you on your machine. All right, the next one up is super common. I'm kind of surprised how many people don't know how to do this. And that is how to properly weld and fill a hole and then finish it off with a grinder. If you don't know how to do this, you're gonna start out by welding just on the edge of it and you're only gonna do half of the hole. All right, after you finish the first pass on the first half, spin the piece around or reposition yourself and do the second half. All you're doing is you're just gonna lay a pass down, just butter up the edge so you can close the gap a little bit. Then you're gonna spin it around again, repeat on the other side, and finish up with a final dab like this. All right, when you flip the plate over now, work on the other side, you can actually hit it with a little more heat comfortably. We want to fully connect with the filler material that we put on the other side. This is how we ensure that we have complete penetration. But you can see how important this skill is. You can literally make a mistake like this disappear. Especially if this part was getting painted after manufacturing, this little boo-boo never even happened. Practice that one up, that one's a lot of fun.